Hello everyone and welcome back to Eat Sleep Breathe and this week I think we're going to have a very interesting topic but one that probably at the very end you're going to ask yourself why didn't I think of this before or a lot of you like me have thought about it knew about it but you were kind of still um, going against the current if you will. Uh, before we do get started in this video I first want to invite you guys um, if you haven't heard me talking about it already or maybe you just haven't heard about it in general I recently launched a brand new podcast. So this podcast is called The Reef Talk. You can head over to uh, my website called thereeftalk.com. You can also find me on iTunes. Um, again, The Reef Talk. It is available for Android users. I think it's called Google Podcast. Um, I'm not an Android user, so I can't tell you for sure exactly how to uh, go about downloading it. Um, but yeah, you can find it on iTunes. And if you are an Android user and you don't want to play it on iTunes, uh, you can go ahead, head over to the website, uh, and listen to it. So I've already dropped five ep uh, episodes. Um, it's very interesting. It's going to be a lot of educational interviewing people, interviewing companies, um, and just really give you another source, another platform uh, to go ahead and li be listening to what you all love. You know, if you're doing a water change, if you're driving to work, maybe if you're at work, at least you got you know, reefing always next to you. Uh, so be sure to head over, guys. Check that, that out. Again, thereeftalk.com is the website. And also, ladies and gentlemen, myself and Aquaman Shalom from Instagram recently also launched a t-shirt company uh, called Reef Tees. That's R-E-E-F-T-E-E-Z. Uh, you guys can, again, head over to the website. Just last week, uh, the pre-orders kind of stopped and we have full stock of everything you see online we have in stock already. Uh, it's ready to ship. Uh, pretty much we're going to be launching new designs every single month. Uh, not only one, but a few different designs and just kind of, you know, trying to be a little bit more creative. Um, I saw a big need for kind of uh, this style of merchandising out in our industry. Didn't really see a go-to company um, offering just killer designs. Uh, you know, I'm not saying there wasn't any. I, uh, For my research, I never stumbled across any. So be sure and uh, check that out again, reeftees.com. So enough of that, guys. I think we're going to dive right into this week's um, update video. And it's going to be something very interesting. It's going to be something that I kind of was already aware about it. I've heard other people, other reefers, um, inappropriate reefer himself. I remember him mentioning this various times. Uh, but just somehow, I don't know, I was always going against the grain. So for you guys wondering what this is, it's going to be how to allow your reef tank, allow your corals to really thrive, get exceptional growth, um, you know, solve a lot of the issues. I know, especially newer reefers, when they're getting started, you don't know how many messages I get either here uh, or on Instagram saying, hey, this coral isn't opening. Hey, you know, this coral's not happy. And it's funny, every time I go deeper in the question, I'm at, for instance, zoas is one I get a lot. People are always asking me, hey, I just added these zoas, they're not opening them up. I've moved them here, I've moved them there, I've changed my uh, wave maker settings, I've changed my lighting. But you got to realize, guys, every single change you do to the tank, whether it's flow, whether it's light, whether it's placement, you got to realize you're ne negatively going to affect the coral. You probably won't kill it, but you will stress it. So if you're having a coral that's not opening, let's say for a full week, and you go ahead and you relocate it, guess what? You just restarted that timer um, and probably made it go longer than it normally should have. So kind of the rule of thumb is I always tell people, you know, put a coral in a general location, kind of leave it there, and don't touch it. Just let it be. Even if it's not opening, just leave it there. The coral needs to get acclimated, and every time you uh, make an adjustment, whether it's placement or chemistry, flow, anything of that sort, you're only stressing out the coral more. So recently, I've been pretty busy with life. Uh, not only life, but doing the podcast, doing the shirts, uh, doing my full-time real estate gig. I'm a full-time real estate agent. i got a newborn daughter, so just, just really life doing what it's doing while still you know, keeping this, uh, these videos out for you guys, it gets pretty difficult. So in that, I kind of let the tank be for, I think it was about two and a half, three weeks. Um, and what do I mean by that? Let it be. I literally mean 
let it be. The only thing I was doing was feeding the fish every day to other day as well as the corals, giving them polyp lab. I wasn't even doing direct feeding anymore with the polyp lab. I was just broadcast feeding, kind of leaving the tank alone. I was letting algae get on the glass. A good thing about my tank, it doesn't have high nutrients. So it's a very light film of algae that gets on the glass. And I just literally left it like that for two weeks. I just yesterday cleaned the film um, on the glass. And one thing I want to share with you guys, I kind of never had done this. You know, a lot of people tell you, the longer you leave your tank alone, as far as putting your hands in, moving stuff, the better off it's going to be. And guys, like, I'm not just saying this, but I don't think I've ever seen so much growth come out of the tank uh, within these two to three weeks that I've just not even put my hand in. Um, and you, you know, you guys out there are probably saying, well, what does your hand have to do with anything? Well, there's different variables involved here. One of them is whatever's on your hand, any chemicals, any oil, even your natural oils, anything of that sort is going to negatively affect the tank. Not in a way that's going to kill it, but it's going to shock them a little bit. It's going to piss them off, um, especially with nano tanks, you know, in 100, 150, 200 gallons, if you put your hand in the tank, you know, the corals ain't going to notice much. But if you don't believe me, do this test, you know, next time. Look at your corals, take a picture of them, and then dip your hand in the tank for, let's say, 10 seconds and watch your corals change. Watch your acans, your torches. They'll just kind of like shrivel up. They'll puff up. Sometimes they'll shrivel up. And it's crazy. It's really crazy how much just our hand alone in the tank uh, can affect the corals. So, and again, that's not even taken into consideration us moving them. That's just a whole other animal, which of course you're going to piss it off even more. But I, it, it just really amazed me how much growth I've seen. My chalices, uh, my acans, my zo just everything is so, 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 so happy. Um, and kind of my, my next thing is to see how much longer I can go without, uh, you know, putting my hand in the tank. You know, unless I absolutely need to put my hand in it. You know, if corals are killing each other or a fish died or something of that sort, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, but I'm going to try and go a full month. You know, I'm, I really want to see, you know, just how much the tank will benefit for that. And I think in the results I saw uh, these past two to three weeks, again, you guys probably think I'm exaggerating, but my Monty caps, my just everything has gotten ex exceptional growth. Um, put it this way, enough for me to consider to not even put my hand in the tank. Uh, and that's kind of going on another point here. If you do, you know, a lot of us like to feed with our hands. If you are going to put your hand in the tank in any way, shape, or form, I put on some gloves. And not only, you know, because you don't want to piss off the corals, but you got to think about it, guys, especially if you got kids around. There's zoas in here. Uh, there's certain toxins that certain corals can release when stressed out. You don't want to get that anywhere near your body. Um, I'm not saying every coral is going to have it, but to a certain level, there is toxins in our reef tank. Um, that's how kind of chemical warfare uh, comes about, but that's for another topic. So I think in general, anytime you're going to put your hand in the tank, try to wear gloves um, and try your best for your skin not to make any contact with the water. Because again, do that test that I just told you guys at the beginning. Put your tank in there and watch how the corals react. Uh, negatively you're going to see them either shrivel up close up and you're really going to notice a change so kind of where am i going with this right you're probably saying so what does this have to do with anything well i just want to share my experience with you guys um, i'm not saying you have to do this i'm sure a lot of you guys are probably going to want to see the results i saw uh, in this little time so you're probably going to want to go ahead and not put your hand in the tank anymore uh, for a little bit and give it a try guys it's not going to hurt it um, try and see if you can go with for two weeks two weeks don't move anything leave everything where it's at continue um, your your current parameters just everything continue the way you're doing it um, and actually I, I don't know if i should let you guys in on this little secret but i didn't even do any water testing <laughs> in those two to three weeks just life really took over for me so we're going to wrap this video up here, up here guys i'd love to hear in the comments if you guys have experienced the same um, maybe if you've seen what I was talking about, whenever you do put your hand in the tank, how corals react negatively or they shrivel up, share with me in the comments if you guys have had the same results I have. Um, let me know what is the longest in the comments you've gone without putting your tank 
or your hand in the tank. It's a little bit confusing there. So I'd love to hear down in the comments. Uh, but again, guys, we're going to leave this video here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this short, sweet video. We got great content coming up, guys, in the near future. We are going to be adding a calcium reactor to this JBJ45. You guys have no idea how excited I am. I'm just missing two pieces to the, actually three pieces to the puzzle. I'm missing the Kimura pump, missing the Milwaukee pH controller, and missing the media. Other than that, I have everything in my hands ready to go. So I'm going to be bringing you guys aboard and seeing really how easy it is to add a calcium reactor. So that's going to be it, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in on this week's episode here at Eat Sleep Brief. I thank each and every one of you for watching. If you aren't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And again, don't forget to comment. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.